We had pretty much had a, a plan in place for their over 10 years on fires, hopefully small ones that started below in the canyon and came up to us. So we started prepping about the third day of the fire because we got the worst possible scenario of fire and weather. So like the morning of the 22nd, like 4 a.m., I got a call that said, hey, you need to look at the weather report and the fire and the expected fire behavior. So the expected fire spread, if we did nothing, and that's what these models are done on, the expected fire spread was gonna take all of Glacier View, go all the way to Highway 287 and beyond the next day. And it tried. There was still a denial process all through the fire that, oh, we can keep it on the other side of the pooter. We can keep it on the other side of the pooter. We can keep it on the other side of the pooter. Those that have been here a while knew that that wasn't a realistic, the farther west the fire got, when it started back in west towards Pinkby Park in that country, we knew the more, the bigger the chance of it blowing across. What we fought for was more burnout at night to eliminate those fuels as far from the pooter as we could. Basically burn out from the highway to here in the bottom south and push the fire away from the canyon. They had the whole fire to deal with, so they needed to stop it basically behind the big mountains up here, which are east and west white pine, and get a line around it using the, the Pingree Park Road, which they ultimately did. Had they done the burnouts that we wanted, it would have kicked up the fire behavior and the fire would have gotten to those areas much quicker and much harder and probably would have made that action impossible. So we understand that, but our buy-in was let's just keep it on that side of the pooter. And, and that's probably really the only real firefighting controversy there is, and that's between us and, and the people on the other side of the pooter. <laughs> so totally understandable, but that's, that's, that's what we believe could have happened, and, and we're not the only ones. And, but it didn't, and the reality is, is we took some other action that kept it as as in control as we possibly could, and, but we still lost a lot. Like for us, we had some time. Um, we had our first um, member of the team, the federal team, showed up about six days before we were hit and started talking to us about needs and planning and, and stuff like that. It was a liaison with us. We knew we had a pretty good fire break in the ridge that we're standing on now and we had a fire break through this, this meadowy stuff that if we put dozer line in it and, and used it correctly and burned off of it when the fire came, we probably had a decent chance of holding it. So we did that very early on. And it was, it was a struggle at first because we were in a cut dozer line across private land. And basically um, it came down to, I told the feds that do it. I'll sign the document, it's all on me. If the fire doesn't come, it's all my fault, and we'll figure out how to pay for the mitigation then. But I said, this is, this is our last chance, and, I, and we're not gonna be able, we won't stop it if we don't stop it here. And the, and the crews agreed. The, there's two or three of the, the top guys that were um, division soups and stuff, they all agreed that this was probably the right thing. Um, so we did that, we did the one main hold line that did in fact hold, except for one little spot where a, where a cow pie caught fire and burned across, and that's just directly in this bottom right here bo below us. We lost uh, 69 homes and assorted other structures in about six hours, six to seven hours that it was on this side of the pooter, and it was a done event. It was because of, I believe, a lot of the pre-work that was done, it ended right there. Had we been hit more southerly, it would have been a lot less, but that's just how it worked out. Um, there needs to be a better regional response in the first hour that's pre-planned and can jump on this stuff. Um, High Park, had something like that been in place, I believe would have been a totally different picture. If we're going to put them out, let's put them out. So let's put all the resources we possibly can early 
and make those as highly organized and highly effective as we possibly can and put them out. If we're not going to do that and we're going to use more of a let it burn policy, then let's train and mitigate and prepare towards that direction. Right now we're somewhere in the middle and it's not working. And the dollars that we spend mitigating are much better sent than trying to do it in an emergent manner on these big fires. It's just, I mean, we throw so much money away on these big fires, it's unbelievable. And that's just, that's no way to run a railroad. From the homeowner standpoint, they need to get serious about mitigation and not mitigation just the 30 feet around their houses and, or 100 feet around their houses that, that their insurance companies are requiring or even the NWCG standards. If they own five acres, they need to mitigate five acres. If they own 500 acres, they need to mitigate 500 acres as they can. There's, there's methodology and even funding out there to get that done. You have to be serious. And it's, it's like, okay, these subdivisions were developed this way. We know that in many cases it was wrong. So it's like, okay, we're gonna make another way out. We're, as a community, we're gonna either buy an easement or whatever we're gonna do, and we're gonna make another way out. We're gonna thin and, and push with the roads and stuff that we have. We're gonna thin and, and make big fire breaks where we can. We're gonna do these things. So next time, as a fire commander, I can say, guys, I need you to go in there. And they go, yeah, we can do that. But when you know for a fact that you're going to go in and try and protect a house and that your way out is going to be totally inundated with fire for a certain amount of time that you can't get out of there if things go bad, I'm not asking that. Mm -hmm. So we've pulled back and we have to. It's the right thing. We're not serious yet. And, I, and if, if High Park didn't do it, Nothing will, nothing will. We'll put our heads in the sand and we'll say, well, we'll just do the best we can. And then when we fail, we'll say, well, there's really nothing anybody could have done.